welcome. Thanks for joining us for the virtual groundbreaking celebration for the Center of Excellence in Autism and Developmental Disorders. I'm Tracy Hawkins, Vice Chair of the Board of Maine Behavioral Healthcare and longtime community volunteer. It's an honor to represent the board. Today, you will hear about the bold steps taken in support of constructing the Center of Excellence and of the recognition of the need for this program of lifelong services. Courageous families will step forward and share their personal experiences. We'll define program highlights, financial information, and provide a Q&A session, session. You'll hear how we arrived at this milestone celebration due to the compelling need and strong support of our communities, the encouragement of Maine Behavioral Healthcare trustees, and of how this project has been championed by Maine Health, the parent organization of Maine Behavioral Healthcare. And now I'm turning things over to our technical guide, Ashley McCarthy. She has some housekeeping and organizational things to cover and will guide us through the program. Ashley? I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. Today's webinar is being recorded. We will be able to share a link with you after the event is complete. We welcome you to revisit the content yourself and share it with friends and colleagues. We also invite your comments and questions. Please look at the Q&A box on your screen. If you think of a question for the speakers at any point, just type it in there and I will hold it for the discussion portion at the end of the event. We'll be conducting a few polls during today's presentation. So this is an icebreaker to get you familiar with the technology. The question is, how are you enjoying the summer? And the response options are, it's great, it's good, and I'd rather be skiing. Please take a few seconds to make your selection and then we will share the results. Let's take a look at those results. Thanks to everyone who participated. It looks like most people said that it is great. I will now hand it back to Tracy to introduce you to today's speakers. Now that we've laid the groundwork, let me introduce you to today's presenters. I am Tracy Hawkins, Vice Chair, Board of Trustees, Maine Behavioral Healthcare. We will hear first from Wendy O'Donovan, Capital Campaign Co-Chair and Parent to an Adult Child with Autism. Next is Matthew Siegel, MD, Vice President of Medical Affairs for the Autism and Developmental Disorders Service at Maine Behavioral Healthcare. Then we'll watch a brief message from Nancy Pond, Capital Campaign Co-Chair. Then we'll hear from Maine, President, Maine Health President Rich Peterson and a few short words from Michelle Zakella, Vice President for Development, before we wrap up with a question and answer session with Dr. Siegel. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. As the board chair of Maine Behavioral Healthcare's Board of Trustees, I am thrilled to celebrate breaking ground for this tremendously important project to bring the best care to Maine people with autism and other developmental disabilities. Maine Behavioral Healthcare has been dedicated to the specialized needs of this population from the opening of the specialty care unit at Spring Harbor Hospital 15 years ago, all the way to this day. We are grateful to you, our community and Maine Health for strongly supporting this initiative, which will benefit all for decades to come. Again, thank you for joining us. Before we get started, I am delighted to share a very special message from Maine Behavioral Healthcare friend and supporter, Senator Susan Collins. While she couldn't be here live, she is very supportive of this project. I'll let her speak for herself through this brief video. Good afternoon. I'm delighted to join in this extraordinary milestone for families with loved ones with autism and developmental disorders. That includes my own family. My husband's son, Tommy, had autism and was nonverbal his entire life. Let me congratulate the community leaders such as Nancy and Kirk Pond, the boards and staff of Maine Health and Maine Behavioral Healthcare on your dedication to those families. Nearly 40,000 people in Maine have autism or another developmental disability. It is one of our great responsibilities to provide the best access to care for this vulnerable population. I've long supported autism research and the needs of people with developmental disabilities, and I'm just thrilled to see this project come to fruition. 
The new Center of Excellence in Autism and Developmental Disorders will bring increased access to care, national expertise, and greater family support to our state. I supported two important federal grants awarded to Maine Behavioral Health Care to support autism research. One is from the Department of Defense. It is to study wearable biosensors. The other, a grant from the NIH to study the physiology that underlies the therapeutic benefits of horseback riding for children with autism. How I remember Tommy loving horseback riding. I applaud the vision of those who have championed this project and congratulations to each and every one of you on this life-changing center. Thank you so much, Senator Collins. Now I'd like to introduce you to Wendy O'Donovan, who is the co-chair of the Capital Campaign Committee along with Nancy Pond. Wendy is an advocate for services for people with autism and the mother of a young adult son with autism. Thank you, Wendy. Good afternoon and welcome to our celebration for the Center of Excellence in Autism and Developmental Disorders, CAB for short. I would like to thank the Maine Behavioral Health Board, Maine Health Board, and its president, Rich Peterson, campaign cabinet members, donors, and friends. My name is Wendy O'Donovan. I'm a wife, special education teacher, and mother of two intelligent, handsome, and kind adult sons, one of which, Ryan, has severe autism, which is accompanied by low-frequency, high-intensity episodes of aggression and self-injury. It is with great pride that I announce, along with my capital campaign co-chair, Nancy Pond, that we have raised $5.3 million toward our goal of $7.35 million needed to build the Center of Excellence in Autism and Developmental Disorders. We began our campaign last summer and have received tremendous support from the community across Maine and the U.S. We are so excited to be part of this amazing project that will transform the existing program into a lifespan oriented full service integrated treatment, research and training center for the needs of Maine families, generate new treatment models, and advance autism science for the benefit of all. I agree to co-chair this campaign in part because the Center of Excellence will have an, out, an adult outpatient clinic, which will be one of the only ones in Maine and can provide support if needed for my son. Our new center will offer a lifespan of services for toddlers and adults. Some of you may be aware, due to personal experience, that autism is often a challenging disorder to live with and treat. It has a wide range of symptoms, including impaired social skills, repetitive behaviors, and communication struggles. A person's symptoms may be relatively mild, enabling them to live typical lives with minimal support while others can have quite severe symptoms and require ongoing intensive treatment. This is the fourth time I've been asked to speak at a Maine Behavioral Health event. Over the years, I have shared Ryan's struggles because of his autism. He grapples daily to manage his frustration, disappointment, and confusion in a safe manner. When he loses control, he exhibits self-injuring behavior, destroying his glasses. We went through 18 pairs last year and attacking others for not being able to solve his understanding of what is going on in the world. In April of 2019, Dr. Matthew Siegel approached me asking if I would co-chair the capital campaign to raise $7.3 million for a Center of Excellence in Autism and Developmental Disorders. I don't like to fundraise. It's not natural for me. 
In fact, when my children were younger, I was the mom who personally bought the sales quota for wrapping paper, mums, and cookie dough. I still have wrapping paper if anyone needs any. However, life isn't about facing things we don't want to do. Isn't, excuse me, isn't life about facing things we don't want to do for the betterment of others. So I jumped in with my amazing co-chair, Nancy Pond, which leads us here to today's virtual groundbreaking ceremony. The Center of Excellence will become a beacon of hope for many families across the state of Maine. It responded to the needs of its patients during the COVID-19 pandemic by providing telehealth services. Now CAD can support patients and their families living in Lincoln County, Arista County, Oxford County, any of Maine's 16 counties. No longer will families feel abandoned and alone. This project is not really about a building. It's about people. The scope, scale, and size of this project are significant, but it's really about fulfilling our mission to improve the well-being of patients and families that CAD serves. Thank you so much for your help and continued support. I appreciate it and please know you are changing the lives of Maine's most vulnerable and their families. Now I'd like to turn the program over to Dr. Matthew Siegel. Hello, I'm Matthew Siegel, Vice President of Medical Affairs for the Autism and Developmental Disorder Service of Maine Behavioral Health Care. Today marks a special step in a long journey, a journey that is succeeding. I wanna thank those of you who have supported this project and invite others to join our community of support going forward. We are truly humbled by your generosity and your belief in our vision. There are really only a few times in our lives when we have the chance to do something substantial and meaningful for our community something that will have a clear and dramatic impact on the lives of many people for decades to come. This is one of those times. Maine Behavioral Health Care, with the strong support of our parent organization, Maine Health, is the leading provider for treating the emotional and behavioral needs of youth with autism, intellectual disability, and other developmental disorders in Northern New England. We provide a continuum of treatment, we perform research, and we train new professionals. Our mission is to keep this population mentally and behaviorally healthy. Our work is to keep them stable, functioning well, out of crisis in the emergency room, and in their homes and residences with their families and peers. This work has become even more critical during the COVID era. While COVID is a challenge for all of us, it is an extreme challenge for our families and our patients who have been suddenly removed from the supports and routines they depend on. We have risen here at Maine Behavioral Healthcare to try to meet this challenge by rapidly innovating to convert our programs to telehealth, work with our state government to help identify the unique needs of this population, and carefully re-engage in live services for those for whom telehealth is just not adequate. Now it's time for our second poll. Could you please mark if someone in your extended family has been affected by autism or another developmental disorder? Please take a few seconds to answer and then we will look at the results to get a better sense of who is in our community. Okay, very interesting to see these results. So as while we may not talk about it often, families are complex and have many variations and needs. And this group of special individuals we are focused on today is certainly present in our lives and in our community as shown by this poll. So our guiding principle at Maine Behavioral Healthcare is that people with autism and other developmental disorders can lead full lives and reach their potential, accessing school, their community, meaningful work and their families. But they can't do this if they develop emotional and behavioral problems that go untreated. When our loved ones suffer from treatable problems like anxiety, depression, irritability, self-injury or aggression, their world shrinks. They are increasingly excluded from the life of their community, their family, the workplace, 
and are at risk of going into crisis and even spending days and weeks in emergency rooms seeking appropriate care. Maine Behavioral Health Care has taken on this problem directly, and for school-aged children, we have been largely successful. In 2006, at Spring Harbor Hospital, we opened the only specialized psychiatric hospital unit for this population north of Rhode Island. In 2014, with the Glickman family and the Harold Alphon Foundation, we opened our current Outpatient Center for Autism and Developmental Disorders, fondly known as CAD, where we gathered many of the providers of family needs under one roof. There we provide child psychiatry, behavior analysis, therapy, case management, speech and occupational therapy, and special education. For school-aged children, we have a clear, effective, evidence-based system of care. It spans an outpatient clinic, intensive day treatment, partial hospital, and acute hospital services. And we strive to keep this population healthy. Now it's time to bring this level of care and expertise to the full lifespan of people with developmental disorders in Maine. For far too long, adults with autism and other developmental disorders in Maine have had extremely limited options to receive even the most basic psychiatric and behavioral care, not to speak of having access to expert coordinated care. Similarly, we have a need and opportunity to expand access to rigorous, systematic, evidence-based treatment for our youngest children with autism in Maine. Our goal is to move them off wait lists and take the greatest advantage of the critical early brain development window where we can have lifelong impact. How will we meet these needs? Today, we are celebrating a milestone in this process, groundbreaking. To provide the space, special environment, and concentrated expertise needed, we are building a center of excellence in autism and developmental disorders that will raise the bar for care in all of Maine. With the significant financial and volunteer backing of all of you in our community, we have broken ground on a new 28,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility on the campus of Spring Harbor Hospital. This building will transform our current programs by providing new services, extending our reach to adults and very young children, attracting the best doctors and clinicians nationally, and creating a behavioral health home where families can have most of their needs met in one place. We will increase access to care, moving from serving about 250 families a year to well over 600. In taking this step, we will also take on the related challenges of training an adequate workforce to serve this population, create access to basic medical services such as blood draws, EKGs, and preventative dental care, and provide the space and systems to support our innovative clinical research program. We will also be able to extend our reach to the whole state. Currently, many of our families drive hours from central, mid-coast, and down-east Maine to access our services. With the technology and additional providers in our new building, we'll be able to greatly increase our use of telemedicine and decrease the travel burden for our families. The building has been designed to meet the needs of our population. We provide a low stimulation relaxation room, special signage throughout the building to guide our patients, a family navigator office modeled on the successful Lunder Family Alliance program of Spring Harbor Hospital to provide support, educational materials, and guidance for families. Every treatment space has observation rooms with one-way mirrors to facilitate caregivers observing and participating in treatment. There are two large sensory rooms, a gym, and outdoor play spaces providing unique areas for sensory treatment and developing play skills. Very excitingly, a life skills room, complete with a grocery checkout counter and shelves, a kitchen, and barber, dentist, and blood draw chairs, which give our patients the chance to practice these critical work skills and life experiences. Finally, we are embedding special sensing technologies in our clinical spaces to provide a high efficiency, real world research platform and are developing partnerships with the Rue Institute, USM and others to provide exciting growth opportunities for research students and faculty. As we have prepared for this day over the past three years and as you heard from Wendy earlier, 
we have learned how challenging it is for our families to live with and support their loved ones with developmental disabilities when they experience significant emotional and behavioral challenges and how important it is to have their community with them on this journey. Thank you for helping us to seize this moment. We are building an enduring place of excellence whose direct purpose is to make the lives of families like theirs better and to move our whole state forward. Our vision is to create a lifespan oriented, full service, integrated treatment, research and training center that will not only meet the needs of Maine families, but will train the next generation of providers and advance autism science for the benefit of all. Now is the time. Thank you. Now we will hear from the president of Maine Health, Rich Peterson, and I'll return at the end for questions and answers. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us for this uh, virtual groundbreaking. If you told me a year ago that I'd be in front of a computer doing a virtual groundbreaking, I would tell everybody that you're crazy, uh, that such a thing doesn't take place, but uh, we are, we're pulling it off here. And again, it's just a wonderful day. And I can't think of celebrating a more special occasion uh, than this one. And I'd like to offer a whole bunch of just thank yous. I'm here representing Maine Health, which is the parent corporation of Maine Behavioral Health, among other 11 hospitals and local health systems across the state. And these events uh, and these types of initiatives start out with a vision. And I wanted to first of all thank Dr. Matt Siegel for that vision. Uh, not only has he been the individual behind this clinically, as you just heard, but this uh, wonderful man has uh, been there uh, and the, the, the whole role of, of the capital campaign itself and uh, just uh, walks the talk and is there from every step of the way. So Dr. Siegel, thank you for that. We're fortunate to have you. Um, it then goes down to a, a board of trustees, both at Maine Behavioral Health and at Maine Health uh, that also had not only the vision, but the courage to move forward with this needed project. Uh, we then had to form a capital campaign committee, uh, and you've heard from one of those co-chairs, uh, Wendy O'Donovan, and you're, we're going to be hearing from Nancy Pond. Uh, I call them the A-team. Uh, I've been involved in so many capital campaigns over the years, but the passion and focus and energy that these two individuals bring to this capital campaign is, uh, is just absolutely incredible, and I want to thank the whole capital campaign committee. I also think it's important for the donors that have helped us achieve a $5.3 million uh, uh, target, or not target, but the amount that we've raised towards a $7.35 million target. And I'm highly confident that we are going to, we're going to achieve that. And the last thank you is, uh, is it goes out to a couple of, couple of families. And, and we heard from Wendy uh, O'Donovan telling her story and, and her husband, Tim, about their situation. And I also think it's really important to, to thank Kathy and Jeff Honeycomb for their uh, sharing and being transparent about what it's like to be a parent uh, of, a, of a, a child with autism. Uh, it's so often that we read about things or we hear about, hear about them uh, through the media, but when you hear the heartfelt uh, experiences of families uh, that are dealing with uh, autism, it really, really brings it to life. And I am so proud of being part of this initiative, so proud of all the work that's taken place. And uh, I just can't wait for the, the ribbon cup cutting, which I know will not be virtual, and we will all be there celebrating the opening of this wonderful uh, center. So thank you for everybody who's had some part in making this a reality. Rich, we appreciate your support. Um, Ms. Michelle Sakella, and I'm the Vice President of Development and Mean Behavioral Health Care. I want to welcome you all here today and thank you for joining us. Now we come to today's third poll. The question is what is your preferred method of contact? Email, phone, or direct mail? Thank you for taking a few moments to complete the poll. Thank you. This will help us determine how to follow up with you um, in the future. Uh, we appreciate your time today and all of your support and encouragement along the way. Whether you're new to the project or if you've been with us since its inception, many of you have helped us reach our current 
total of $5.3 million. Thanks to you and others who were able to meet our groundbreaking goal and complete and begin construction. As you heard, we have $2 million more to go to reach our goal to open the center in June of 2021. If you'd like more information about the Center of Excellence, have thoughts or input about potential funding or would like to support the project or just learn more about it, please don't hesitate to contact me. And thank you again for your support and encouragement as we make the dream a reality for children and adults with autism to receive crucial services and support all in one place. Now I'd like to introduce a video from longtime friend and supporter of Maine Behavioral Healthcare and Maine Health, Nancy Pond. Welcome, Nancy. Hi, I'm Nancy Pond, co-chair of the capital campaign for the Community Center of Excellence. This groundbreaking today is about courage, gratitude, and optimism. It's a tale of how Dr. Matthew Siegel and his remarkable team stepped forward to present a compelling case to build a new and expanded lifelong service program for families of children with autism and developmental disorders. It's a story of gratitude to families in Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and New York, who combined to raise the funds to get this project off the ground. With the unwavering support of Maine Health Leadership and our friends at foundations near and far, we're close to realizing our financial goals, but we still need your support. Please consider joining our community initiative to build the center of excellence. Thank you for being here today and hearing our story. Thank you everyone for participating. We have several questions that have been submitted by the audience. As a reminder, if you have a question that you have not yet submitted, please enter it into the Q&A box. I see that the first question is, how many jobs do you think will, this will mean to the area? So we anticipate that our full service line will employ over 170 full-time equivalents or people uh, serving this population. And our expansion will create at least 80 new jobs in this area. And we've been very proud to see that our staff often move uh, in a developmental way themselves from our frontline positions to going to graduate school and returning to us often as nurses, social workers, physicians, and researchers. And so this center will, will play an important role in the economic uh, impact and moving forward in Southern Maine. The next question uh, is, I, re I read that the new center will cover the full lifespan of a patient. Can you give more detail on what that means? Great question. So currently in our outpatient center, we serve children who are roughly five to 20 years old. But before that and after that, we really don't have services for them. Moving to our new center of excellence allows us to offer very early child services in the form of an in-home program, as well as a preschool program located in the center, and to offer an adult uh, multidisciplinary clinic, as you heard from Wendy O'Donovan, which will serve adults and take care of their emotional and behavioral needs. So our dedication is now expanding to meeting the needs of people in this population of whatever age they are. And this is something we're very proud of. The next question is, uh, when you say a research facility, some may envision cancer research and the Dana Center in Boston. Is that what the research facility will be like at the new center? A great question. Um, the way we do our research uh, at Maine Behavioral Healthcare with this population is we do clinical research, meaning that we are not in a laboratory, typically uh, using pipettes and gels, but rather we are doing research live in our clinical programs um, and using those clinical programs, of course, with parental admission and consent, uh, permission and consent to 
perform research studies uh, while people are engaging in their regular activities uh, within our programs. And this is a unique synergy of clinical service and clinical research. And we have found that both benefit from this synergy. And part of the vision of building, of creating this building is it will offer more opportunity for us to do that. So you can picture that there isn't a separate research facility within this building. The entire building is a combined clinical service and research uh, program. There's another question, uh, which is how is construction going? Have there been any delays due to COVID? Is everything on schedule for anticipated opening? Another very good question. So I'm very pleased to report that uh, due to the very strong support of Maine Health, as well as our boards of trustees, as well as a excellent administration and partnership with the city of Portland in which this building is located, uh, construction is on schedule. There have not been significant delays uh, and we anticipate at this point meeting our targeted opening in June or July of 2021. And that's very exciting. While COVID certainly has affected many things, we have been able to adjust and most importantly, our donors, our leadership and our city administration has been extremely supportive because we all know that at some point COVID will end, but all the needs we are focused on in providing for with this facility will continue long after COVID hopefully is a memory for all of us. Uh, another great question, will the Center of Excellence be able to serve families outside of the greater Portland area through telehealth question? Uh, so the answer is yes. Um, we currently are engaged in telehealth uh, right now, brought on by the challenges of the COVID area. Um, but part of the express design and intent of our new Center of Excellence is that we will be able to provide greater telehealth services and we will have more providers to do that service with. And we're doing it not just uh, with kind of typical outpatient clinic appointments, but we are also actually providing telehealth services for our more intensive services, such as our preschool program and our day treatment program. Uh, and that has been a challenge and something that we have taken on and are doing our best to support our patients and their families. And it is our specific goal. We have many patients currently and people we are not reaching in Booth Bay Harbor, down East Maine, Central Maine, uh, et cetera, who we ask to come all the way to us and we would like to be able to have less burden for them uh, and reach them through telehealth. And so we are looking forward to doing that even more in the future. So another question uh, is, please describe how the new building will approach being carbon neutral. Also a very good question. Uh, so we did not mention it, um, but we do have in the design of this building a plan to outfit it with as many solar panels as we can afford to put on it. And that will be dependent on our future fundraising over the next year. Uh, but we have made a commitment to that and we have designed in the support for those solar panels. If we achieve our goal and are able to fully fund that uh, solar panel array, it will cover approximately 60% of the, of the electric needs for this building. And so certainly approaching uh, that desired state of carbon neutrality. I'll also mention that we carefully designed the building to be as energy efficient as possible, including the entire building is runs on electricity and heat pumps. And so there is no uh, furnace or natural gas uh, for this building. It is an entirely electric building. And so we are certainly reaching for those environmental goals like we all are. Another question, um, how much does the center's services cost for families for the various types of care that they need? So I'm really glad you asked this question and it actually brings up, I think two impor very important points that we have not mentioned. So one is, is our services run 100% on healthcare insurance reimbursement. And in fact, about 60 to 70% of our reimbursement is from Medicaid. 
In other words, uh, also known as main care, uh, which is the uh, payer for many people with developmental disabilities or with lower income. So families typically do not have to pay beyond a copay, and for Medicaid, there often is no copay. Um, but it brings up another point I wanted to highlight that is important, which is our philanthropy and the money that has been raised and will be raised over the next year um, is 100% going to building this building, but all the services in it are going to run without a uh, need for further philanthropic support. In other words, all of our operations run on our insurance reimbursement. Uh, and so that is an important that we are self-sustaining financially um, and able to meet the needs of our community. And I would say a last question is, I heard there was two million left to raise. What is the plan to raise that over the next year? And is June 2021 the deadline for that amount? Um, so yes, that is the deadline. Uh, and we will raise that money all together over the next year, over the next 12 months. Uh, and our plan is to reach out continually to all of you and all of your contacts to look for people who want to support this project and the needs that we have presented today. We will also uh, run an employee campaign, uh, which will begin over the summer months. And we will hold further events to invite friends who wish to hear more and gather with us about this project. So we've had remarkable support and we're, we are sure that we will continue to receive it in the coming months, um, even as we're in this COVID era. So uh, thank you very much for participating. Uh, I want to hand back for our final piece uh, to Tracy Hawkins, the Vice Chair of our Board of Trustees. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. It's been quite a session. Thank you for your participation. As we've said, we're happy to respond to any additional questions. Please contact Michelle Zakella in our main behavioral health care development office. Thank you for joining us today. Please stay tuned for your next our next opportunity to share good news. And please share the information you've learned today in your communities. Again, thank you.